All right, we are good. Miss Marsha Ann, ma'am, welcome to the Flow and Flourish podcast. This has been a long, 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 long time in the making, and I'm so grateful we've been able to connect today. How are you, beautiful? I am absolutely lovely, and I'm so happy that we're connecting. And to all of your listeners, I bring you good joy. I bring you my sunshine greetings from the beautiful island of Jamaica. Listen, I am so jelly. Like I told you (laughs) offline that I will be there in March and I cannot wait to see you and hug you. But in the meantime, listen, the weather is shifting. We get two seasons in, you know, the Midwest, summer and winter. And so it went from like 90 degrees to, I don't know, 60 uh, so yes, please send the sunshine this way. As I, I, I heard about the, I heard about the weather changes, and I'm like, really already? So I'm gonna keep you all nice and warm between now and then, in and out of season. Our <laughs> weather stays the same. <laughs> I'm working on Chef Ron so that we can move to Jamaica. I'm hoping, Good. hoping, you know, when we get there in March, he's like, I like this. We should move. <laughs> I'm ready. (laughs) Come on down. (laughs) Oh, well, thank you again for being here. Um, You know, I've already given you a formal intro with your bio and whatnot, but if you could just, you know, in your own words, tell the listeners a little bit about what you do, how you ended up in this space, and then we'll start talking about really how to activate your greatness through Mm self-care. You know, I believe a big part of why I ended up in this space is very clear. And I think a lot of our other ladies will be able to relate to this, especially. I would say to you that I am your typical high achieving woman. Yes, ma'am. You know, you know, all of us who want every title behind our name, or we've got to get the cape on. And so um, you do the degrees, you get the promotions, you're going and going. So you're the mom and, you know, every hat that we can possibly wear. And we glorify the bigger the crown, the wider the cape, the more G-force we have to have. Yes. But all of that came to a crashing halt when I was able to identify that really there was more to my life than what I thought was a fulfilled life. I knew I was functioning, Mm. but I knew deep down I was not flourishing and I was not fulfilled. And in the midst of the pandemic, I had to come to a screeching halt and face myself. And remind myself that you can have more degrees on a thermometer. It doesn't really make you fulfilled. Go on and preach, girl. (laughs) You can have the highest capacities professionally. If you're not fulfilled in your inner man, you're only adding layers on and covering the surface of the core of who you are. And so the quest for fulfillment, living a fulfilled life, has really been my focus and it has brought me here. And what does that mean to me versus what it means to someone else is totally different. Mm -hmm. Um, Success for many could be in material. My quest for fulfillment was about living a life that would afford me to leave a legacy, to Mm -hmm. create an impact, to really embrace inner peace, to live in prosperity, to have love and joy and do that organically, not with acquisitions because things don't bring it. It's gotta come from within and pour out. And that really brought me to a place of saying, Marsha Ann, there truly is more to your life. Mm. And you will know if you, listening now, you will know whether or not You have this yearning for more, where the more is saying, all right, I really have gotten the things, but I got to take care of the inner me. How is my heart? How is it flowing? Is it flowing? Am I stuck? (laughs) Or am I stuck? Yeah. Or stagnant. Mm. Sometimes you're stuck and you can see and navigate your way out. But sometimes you have plateaued and God never designed us 
to plateau. We are actually designed for purpose to evolve. And so I had to embrace as well that every season adds up. I had to embrace that there are certain things that can't come with this new mindset. Mm -hmm. So I'm big about mindset. I'm big about purpose. I'm big about ensuring that I am a conduit for fellow women who understand that being a high achiever is really a mask. Yes. Oh, Marsha Ann, like you said so much, and I don't even know where to start. First of all, you just freed a whole lot of people who are glorifying that bigger the crown, the bigger the cape, the mm-hmm. acquisition of all the physical things, right? Like being a high achiever, um, an overachiever, as I like to say, you are in pursuit of getting and collecting all those things. And it, you think that it's going to make you feel better or feel fulfilled or add to, you know, your badges of honor. And so the fact that you've been able to stop in the middle of everything and say, you know what, this is not about what's going on outwardly. Cause I got all that. I've checked all those boxes. It's what's happening on the inside. So just hearing from you speak of that, I know is freeing so many of the ladies, the overachievers that are listening to this, like, you know what, I do need to pause and giving yourself permission to do that, right? To get into flow, to feel, allow yourself, first of all, to even feel what's going on. Cause when you're too busy moving around and doing all the things, you don't have time to feel, you're just going. But can I tell you that the busyness is also a path a a part of that mask wearing because the busyness also we like to to really put it up as this badge of honor Mm -hmm. but a lot of times the busyness is an avoidance of facing the the things that we really need to confront and don't get me wrong achievements are important we are we are made to want to do better, to grow, to develop, not to idolize it to the sacrifice of self. Mm-hmm. And, and so it is very important that absolutely, especially as women, we want to make sure that we are doing things that are fulfilling us, mm-hmm. not doing it out of the imposture syndrome scenario where you feel oh well do I need to just get that one more degree do I need (laughs) do I need the 26 letters of the alphabet behind my name for me to believe that there is a seat at the boardroom for me um you know it really is so important that we get centered first Mm -hmm. that when we become our wholesome self everything else is really an enhancement But when we look to the other things to enhance us and we are already broken on the inside, understand it must crumble. It has to break apart at some point. So that's where I got to. Yeah. And it just, I'm listening and reflecting on, you know, where I'm at on my own journey of of putting the busyness aside, taking the mask off and The analogy that you used reminds me of something my mom would say, like, that's like putting clean clothes on a dirty body. Exactly. Like, like, what what is the point? It still stinks. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so we're, we're learning how to clean from the inside, which is how we activate our greatness. And it's by focusing on that self-care. And I just, I love that you say there's nothing wrong with achievement, Right. We have to be able to achieve things, especially if you're not someone who just embraces mediocrity, right? Right. We weren't put here to embrace mediocrity. I believe in growing and flowing and flourishing and all of those different things. And so I would love for you to talk a little bit about how you help women to do that. You know, as you've been incorporating your own story, we talked about your whole process. I'm going to let you take the lead on lead and talk (laughs) a little bit about that. Fantastic. So I believe the very first thing to establish is that I really genuinely believe, and I came up with this last year, that all of us are designed for greatness. Nope. None less than another. God 
gave us our DNA for greatness. And a lot of times our life experiences may have us derail some of that greatness where self-doubt creeps in, you know, fear of judgment, fear of failure, yep. fear, fear of success, which is a real thing where some folks will abort their greatness because they are so afraid to succeed and they're afraid of the judgment that others will levy upon them because of their success or their fear of being able to handle the success. And keep it up, so, right? And, and keep it up. It. Correct, correct. And maintain it because of the fear of the eyes. What will everyone else say? So I, I worked on, because of my inner work and having to remind myself of the greatness that's within me and how I had to peel away my layers of the things that created fear for me to even propel to the next level, I decided that I had to work on self. And by doing so, I had to help other women along the way. Mm -hmm. So all of us lead our lives, don't we? Mm -hmm. We are supposed to be CEOs of our lives. So we oh, lead no, our well, lives. I want to say quick before you, you go in, go get a pen and paper if you have not already, because you will need all of this. You will think you can remember it, but you will not. <laughs> I want you to really write it down. There's something powerful in writing. So yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want everybody to be ready to capture all these nuggets you're about to drop. Me. Well, it's important because writing down allows repetition, which leads to retention. And hmm. all of us would need to be able to gain from this. So I decided to do my deep dive on self and then help to create these pillars to have other women do the very same thing. Mm -hmm. And so the very first thing that I had to identify is that as we activate our greatness, what do we need to do that? And then how do we lead our lives? Because at the end of the day, we are in fact CEOs of our lives, right? We don't have to have our name on a massive skyscraper building people you are the building tell me, can tell i just tell you say it you again are, girl you are the building and understand that you're busy looking at brands and buying brands but you are your own brand i just did a podcast about this as well that um actually will air before this does but it's the same thing you are your brand come on now you preaching today ma'am so because you are your own brand and the CEO of your life, we must be conscious of the things that we lead. So you lead your life. Mm -hmm. If you are a working woman and you're in a corporate environment, you lead in your corporate capacity. If you're an entrepreneur, you're leading your entrepreneurial life. If you are a mom, you're leading as a mom. If you're a wife, you're leading in that role. Like name the things. You write them down for your personal exercise and you determine for, you're leading your finances, mm -hmm. you're leading your emotions, you're leading your mental state. And the word lead, we oftentimes affix it to leadership like positions or we just use it lightly. Mm -hmm. But I decided to dissect that word because you see, if you're going to activate your greatness, you're going to need to determine how to L-E-A-D your life. And this is applicable to any area that you need to lead. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to lead, you've got to ask yourself, where am I not thriving? Mm -hmm. Where are the areas that I am not functioning as effectively and why? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, it's because you are holding on to something, someone, an environment, people, places, or things mm -hmm. that are not setting you free. My question to you is for leading your life, what is the L? What do you need to let go? What do you need to liberate yourself from so that you can truly lead that life of greatness, that you can truly activate your greatness? What do you need to let go? Are you romanticizing with a situation, <laughs> a relationship, yeah. a job, 
and you're holding on and your wrist is clutching on and you know, if you know in your heart that you are not able to get to the next level of your life because it is stifling the life out of you. What is it that you need to let go of that is so highly toxic mm -hmm. and it is seeping into you and it is not affording you to be great? Listen, let it go. You already know. I know we've talked about this online, but there's just something so powerful about being in the presence of another woman who's so like-hearted and like-minded. Because with my pillars of flow and my keys to capacity, I'm constantly talking about taking that inventory, right? Yes. Not only in your personal life, but in your professional life. And then understanding what's working, what's not working. And I love that you're, you're using the LEAD acronym and helping us to understand what we got to let go. Mm -hmm. Because when you're holding on to all of these different things, whether it is that job or that relationship, you know, outdated beliefs and values that no longer support who you are today, nor who you're becoming. Yes. It's taken up your capacity mentally, emotionally, financially, all of those different things. So, oh, you know, I'm, I'm screaming on the inside over here with joy because that letting go piece, I believe is, it has to be the first step, right? Yes. As you become aware of what is toxically seeping into you that too like that's a whole word the yes. stuff that you're holding on to isn't just outside of you it's becoming part of you and seeping into you so oof, I just had to share that right. yeah <laughs> so, absolutely absolutely and so once you do that that let go liberates you so if you if you envisioned yourself as an eagle your ability to soar there is no way if we were to put weights down that eagle can't move from the ground mm. so you got to determine what is it going to take for you to get your wind the wind beneath your wings to soar do that inventory write it down and determine what you got to let go it could be letting go of your own self-doubt it could be letting go of your own fears let go doesn't have to involve someone else but the the, the someone else that must face the person in the mirror is me yeah. This is not about everybody else. This is all about leading you and your life. It's so that internal one, work, right? It is internal. And, and brace yourself. It can be very painful. And ugly. <laughs> ugly. But listen, clarity comes in the doing. It does. Yeah. Are you prepared to live another day, another year of your life? Knowing. <sighs> that there is greater in you, that there is mental, emotional, physical, psychological freedom to be experienced mm. only for you to really assess what you gotta let go off of. Yeah. So do it. That do it. makes me think quickly about, you know, a long time ago when I was in an abusive relationship um, and I remember, having a conversation with a friend that I hadn't talked to in a long time. And everything that the friend said was super positive. Like, oh, I'm so happy I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And I replayed the conversation in my head and everything that I said about what was going on in my life was so negative. I was unhappy, I was miserable. And you guys know me, that's not the type of person that I am. Um, but in that moment, I did exactly what you just said. I said, do I want to feel like this a year from now? I was like, oh no. I'm like, what about six months? What about two weeks? What do I want to feel like this tomorrow, right? And what do I need to let go of in order to put myself in a position to no longer feel like this? You got to be tired of being tired. Yes. Right? In order Absolutely. to let that stuff go. And yes. so I just wanted to share that story and Body who's listening that knows you got to start where you are and yes it's painful and yes you know you're gonna ugly cry but mm -hmm. it's the work that you're doing on the inside to create the life that you want so you have the capacity to spend the time and energy doing the things that you love to get that fulfillment 
and all of that. So I'm a hush. You go ahead. Let's talk to us about this next step, man. <laughs> so the next step is that knowing that you would have been bold enough to make the inventory check and determine what you're going to let go. Your E in lead is to remember you've got to empower yourself. Because you need to celebrate that, yes, I've let go, but now this is where you are going to be building momentum. Mm -hmm. And empowerment really is about the decision making of choosing what are the things that I need to do to get to that next level of greatness. Mm -hmm. What are the things that I have neglected doing for myself all this time because I was holding on to all these crates and baggages that never allowed me, I didn't allow myself to flourish mm -hmm. and to flow. <laughs> you know, I love you, right? <laughs> so because of that, empower yourself to know that to flow and to flourish comes with the decisions that you're going to make because yeah. empowerment is key. And never for a moment isolate yourself. So in the midst of empowerment, you've got to determine what are the nourishing things you need to do for your soul? Mm -hmm. What are the nourishing things you need to do for your mind? What podcast are you listening? Are you listening mm -hmm. to this podcast? Have they done your capacity calculator? That's a part of empowerment. Because to, to, to really know where you stand, you've got to assess where you are. So I would encourage everybody do the capacity calculator that you offer so that they can really understand where am I now and where do I need to go? Where am I overloading myself? You know, I'm cheesing over here, first of all, because that capacity calculator is my baby. And when I put it together, I thought about how it's not just representative of who I was then, right? And who needs help then. This is something that I literally check on a regular basis because even being a capacity coach, I can let too much get on my plate. And it's a reminder of how to empower ourselves and how to empower myself. And I also wanna add to one of the things that you said in terms of empowerment is, you know, when you're pouring into yourself, who are you surrounding yourself with? Ah. Who, who are the ladies? Because a big part of me getting through what I've been experiencing over the last six months of what was going on with my dad and him passing, you don't even realize, Marsha, and that you alone reaching out to me randomly saying, God said you were on my heart. What is going on? How can I pray for you? Like that level of empowerment and love and support has allowed me to continue to show up and do what God has called me to do. And so it's so critical, essential, whatever big, fancy, important word you want to put in that place that to nourish that empowerment, yep. that you're surrounded by like-hearted and like-minded women who are really rooting for you, not yes. fake rooting like, yes. oh, that's so cute. No, like, are they calling and checking on you? Like, I just had another young lady that I met last year who out of nowhere said, hey, girl, I just wanted to hear your voice. I haven't heard it in a while. Call me back. I want to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Look at that. Listen. No, the, it is it is vital. And I and I say now more than ever. And the true test, a lot of us would admit that with the pandemic and in the time that everybody came to a screeching halt, you really began to appreciate who are my people. Yes. And who do I need to? And remember, don't confuse that your circle, you don't want to be surrounded by people only to tell you what you want to hear. You need people who are going to commend you. They're going to challenge you. They're going to convict you. You need energy givers, not energy drainers. <laughs> Period. <laughs> yes, you need, you need energy yeah. givers because- yeah. Many of us who are these high achievers are the ones who are giving and giving and giving. Right. Right. And, you know, like our lovely Jatia tells us and that we hear all the time, you can't give from an empty cup. You're supposed to give from your overflow yes. and from your saucer. And you can't do that if nobody is pouring into you. 
And that's where the the self-care comes in. Like all of these different pieces that you're talking about are the components of self-care that are allowing us to really activate that greatness. So I love it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So monitor what you listen to, monitor what you watch, monitor who you entertain in your Mm -hmm. space and know that a part of empowerment means setting boundaries to what you do not want in this new season of your life. And remember purpose. I need you to talk about that for a little bit because you know, I'm always talking about boundaries and some people consider boundaries a bad word or a scary word and it, and it can be, but talk about why boundaries are so important. Boundaries I have grown to appreciate. Now I'm speaking from my experience. Remember when I had the big crown on and the big cape and I thought I had to do everything and you had to be available 24 seven and you just couldn't say no because I'm superwoman, I gotta get it done. It is a guarantee for burnout. Mm. And so boundaries really simply put for me is establishing what I value and protecting it at all cost. Ooh, I'm going to pull that difficult. out. <laughs> not difficult. Because okay. the truth is, for me, for example, my peace is important to me. Mm-hmm. My inner peace is critical to me. And so I have to determine for myself what are the measures measures, we'll call it measures for some people who don't like the word boundaries. What are the measures that I need to take Mm -hmm. to protect my peace? I would say to you very simply, for those of you who peace is a boundary, you will know anything that makes you feel agitated, anything that really triggers you from altering that peace. Mm -hmm. If that phone rings and a certain phone and a name comes up and you're like, oh, I'm not ready for that. (laughs) <laughs> the you way my capacity is set up today. Exactly. You need to be able to establish for yourself that this is not something that I can entertain at this time. But also, more importantly, we teach people how to treat us. Yes. So we have to have our involvement in this entire process. So a big part of that setting up boundaries also includes If every Sunday at two to three is your rest time, then you, your family knows that, your friends know that. And if there's a fire in the house, call the local fire station because you can't do nothing. I can't do it. Just help me to get out. Like if you have to get me me to come out, (laughs) get me out. But don't look to me to solve it when you in fact can take the first step. Yeah, And so we really do teach people how to treat us. If we want to burn ourselves out because we think it's a badge of honor, then how many of us have gotten ill because of that? I know I have. Nicole, I know you have. Yeah, I'm sure the listeners have as well. I I hear about it all the time. Absolutely. I want to add to that too. With the boundaries piece, you know, like you said, if the house is on fire, don't call me, call 911. But we also have to put things in place Mm -hmm. because everybody's not going to respect those boundaries. So for example, I've asked people not to call me after nine o'clock, right? Because after that time, I'm trying to wind down. I'm working on my nighttime routine. I might be watching a movie with my husband, whatever it is, that's the boundary I've put in place, but everybody doesn't listen. So do you know what I do? I put my phone on do not disturb after nine o'clock to prevent the interruption from people who still, no matter how many times I've asked, flat out told, you know, don't call after such and such. I do that as a protective mechanism because that time for me means everything. So I just want to encourage our listeners too. you know, you can say something all day long, but, but what other kind of things do you have in place for those who may not and will not respect those boundaries. Absolutely. And and, and, and I, be, I believe a big part of that is at the end of the day, it comes right back to us, right? Yep. So I'll speak to also other ladies, especially moms who will say, oh my goodness, I want to work out, but I don't have the time. Mm. I want to read a book, but I don't have the time. 
And so we all have the same 24 hours. I wish I could eat healthier, but I don't have the time. But if we truly focus on ourselves, self-care, activating greatness, leading this life, we have to determine out of the 24 hours, you deserve, you deserve, because remember, if you don't give yourself the time, you're devaluing yourself. Ooh, come Are on, you really not worth it? Are you really not worth it? And it's, it's making the time too, right? Like we have to choose. About. We make the time for what matters to us. Yep. I'll tell you what, we will pour out our mind, body, and soul for our children. We will do everything for them, right? For some, some reason, it seems like we have 48 hours in a day when it comes on to whatever needs the kids have. <laughs> but then when it comes on to you just choosing to say, I'm taking this one hour for myself, whether it's devotion time, whether it's exercise, whatever that matters to you, Today's the day to remind everyone, stop devaluing yourself by suggesting you don't have time to take care of yourself. Stop it. Mm. And taking care of yourself, I never said to you, go to a luxurious spa, Come on, get now. the robe, get the champagne. I never said that I'm asking that of you. I'm just saying you deserve to know that out of 24 hours and do not make it, oh, I'll squeeze it in when I can. No, perhaps it means giving yourself waking up one hour earlier than everybody else. And that might be for you. It might be 4 30 in the morning, but it has to be your quiet time because you're going to erode your ability to be great because you're going to be so worn out and to have resentment over time because you have deprived yourself from taking care of yourself. You're designed for greatness. I'm just waiting on you to really make a date with yourself. And this time is my time. And when you teach those around you that this is non-negotiable, trust me, everybody adjusts to it. I have to tell you, because for the last almost two years, I've been intentional because what I hear you saying is you have to be intentional non-negotiable and put it on the calendar just like you make time to go to work you make time to do laundry you make time to cook make time to do everything for everybody else you mm -hmm. have to be intentional and put that time on the calendar long story short um you know with all the stuff that's been happening over the last couple of months my daughter came to me last weekend and she said mom I think I'm gonna do what you've done and go spend some time by myself I'm going to rent a hotel room and I'm going to journal and I'm going to cry if I need to I don't want you to think that I'm doing anything else I know I'm grown I'm like listen you don't have to explain that to me but can I just wow. tell you how how grateful wow. I am because what I'm modeling I'm teaching everybody how to treat me now she's doing the same thing and when she came back she was cheesing from ear to ear she's like now I get it I understand you know why you go because there's something different Absolutely. about carving that time out and spending time with yourself now it doesn't have to be at a hotel that's what I choose because I like to get away from all the responsibilities even if it's just for a night Yes. Um, and put myself in an environment where I have no choice but to focus on myself. Right. And having her repeat that behavior, I, I feel that's monumental. the right thing. That's monumental. Kudos for that. And what you're doing is that you're allowing her to have caught that so early. You and I just caught it. Yep. Right. This, like, this I wish I our lives. 18. But she has it at 18. And then because we're modeling the healthier way now that she has caught onto, that sets the tone as she enters her life. And that's at every level, personal and professional in all her connections, she will know when it's time to step aside. Well done. Thank you. Well done. So that leads to the A. Because what she did is what I speak to in the A in lead. So we talk about letting go. Mm -hmm. and liberating oneself we talk about the e ensuring about being empowered and the a is to activate the word act is a verb you got to take action 
You got to do something. You got to do something. <laughs> what is that area of your life you know you need to work on that you have delayed doing that you need to take action on? Don't look at the whole pizza pie. Just deal with one slice. Take action. You're overwhelmed, right? Correct. Looking at that one slice. Thank Just you for that. Deal with one slice. Don't look at the whole pie and think, oh my gosh, where do I begin? It's all right. Begin with the first step. <laughs> Then the second, <laughs> but activating means whatever it is, it's already there. So we'll speak to your greatness. It's in your DNA. You have laid it dormant for a while because of your life experiences. Do not look in that small rear view mirror that is so small that it just tells you that's behind you. Look ahead, the big windscreen, the highway that's ahead of you. Focus in that direction and take action moving forward, knowing that the better that's ahead is greater than what you've left behind. You don't live in regret. You use those life experiences to build you up for the greater. So activate. I just, I love it. I love it because you said something. It's already there. It's mm -hmm. been lying dormant. You just need to activate it right you don't have to go searching far and wide and I know I've been guilty of this and I'm sure you have and so have the listeners where you go looking outside right like we talked about oh maybe if I go get my nails done maybe if I take a trip that was me right like right let me go do this let me go shopping let me all of these external things yeah. but when you take the time and I my L is to listen right to listen about what's going on um but when you take that time to take that inventory, to understand what you got to let go, to understand what you need to empower yourself, you have to activate what's on the inside I, that's been there waiting I, for you, right? Like you said, when you make that appointment with yourself and you put yourself on your own calendar, you're activating that greatness that's been lying dormant. I just... Girl, you're I'm telling lovely. yourself, you're telling yourself, when was the last time you did affirmations to remind yourself, I am beautiful, I am worth it, I'm invaluable. You know, it is so important that in that activation process that you feed your soul every day. Every single day. Every single day and throughout the day because you're going to have the interruptions, the obstacles, the little voices in our heads that we have to silence all the time, but it is truly daily work in progress. And so I then move from, now that you've activated it, the biggest part of it is really making the decision, the D, mm. to stick with it. You have to have the determination, you have to have the discipline. The D is making the decisions truly in your interest. And here is what we know. We know that when we are thriving, when we are fulfilled from the inside out, everyone else around us sees it and benefits from it. Yes. Because now you are operating with a sense of joy, a sense of peace, a sense of prosperity, a sense of fulfillment, because it's the inner that pours on the outer. Mm -hmm. So I would want to say a big part of Activate for me, as an analogy, take up, remind yourself, take up a can of soda, mm -hmm. shake it up again, pop it open and burst. Everywhere. And all that is on the inside of you as the analogy of a soda can, and that has come out and has been activated, that acti activation was only possible because you decided yeah. to, to do shake something. it up, literally. You gotta shake it up, right? You gotta shake it up. And you gotta shake it up. For me, as you were talking, the deciding part, deciding to get up and stick with it every single day, the dedication, right? and the discipline and knowing some days are going to be easier than others. And some days are going to be much harder than others. Yeah. But when you're in that D phase, deciding to just keep going, I say all the time, you got to put one foot in front of the other. 
Just right. one. J just one. Just one. And it's similar to not looking at the whole pizza, one slice at a time. And as overachievers, I think we need to point out that we're often trying to do all of it at the same time. And that's Perfect. why we're burnt out. Yes. That's why our brain is spinning and fizzing and we're trying to figure out why we have no energy because you're thinking about everything. Girl, take a piece. Yes, exactly. Just take a, piece. Just take a little piece. And decide to work through that piece. And right. I just love your analogy of the pop can because when you're shaking it up, right? Everything's starting to move around and work together. And you pop that top and woo! And that's exactly. all you, all that greatness that you have yes. inside of you. Yes. Oh, Marsha. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a fact. And we all have to be very mindful that we are that can. Yes. And the truth is when the lid is on, nothing happens, right? Come on, girl. What have you put a lid on in your life that you know deep down that the lid is on because you have chosen to accept where you are? Mm. And I'm not saying that life has been easy, mm -hmm. but I'm also telling you that you're more than worth it. You have to fight for what you know you are designed to do. And that whatever pain that you have experienced, it's for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And it's in that same soda can. The self-care that you're looking for is not built up in luxurious trips. That's nice. I'm the first person to jump on a plane. <laughs> Listen, I just said I'm trying to go to Barbados, ma'am. <laughs> exactly. I'm the first person to go on a plane. I'm the first person at the beach. I'm the first person who's going to live this life. Because you see, I can also tell you, that you're, you will never thrive until you face this person yourself in front of the mirror and identify all of those areas that you know you have kept a lid on it because if you open it, it's going to be uncomfortable. Yes, it's going to be uncomfortable. I'm telling you that I have lupus. I never faced the fact that I had lupus and I chose to hide it under a lid I didn't want anybody to know because I didn't want to appear weak. Mm -hmm. I didn't, it was a part of my syndrome of if anyone knows, it looks like, you know, I'm going to be weak. I can't be functioning. But do you understand the stress of hiding that, of keeping oh. that lid on only made my condition worse? Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, since I have begun speaking about it since last year, that God's grace is so good to me, but my health, has been the best it has ever been to the marvel even of doctors Come because on. i let it i let go all the things related to one why are you hiding mm -hmm. what are you hiding in your life that is that you're stifling mm -hmm. just because you don't want to face it or you don't want anybody to know it's taking up your capacity it is taking up your capacity which leaves no room, right? Like that's what capacity is about. Correct. Having the room to, and making room and time and having the energy to be able to be yourself, to be able to activate that greatness, yep. to yes. be able to live the kind of life that you want to live. And it, it takes a certain level of honesty. Yes. And it takes more time and energy to hide oh my who gosh. we are, what we want, what we need, what's going on. Because then you're constantly trying to cover it up, right? We're putting Absolutely. clean clothes on dirty bodies. So, oh. Listen, take the gray Damn. clothes off. <laughs> take them off. <laughs> take them off. Because oh. the moment you release, I am telling you, it is the most liberating mm -hmm. feeling of your life. And in this environment where just the demonstration of wearing a mask a lot of people are hiding behind the mask. Mm. So when someone says, how are you doing? You go, I'm well. Oh, you dress it up. You put on the clothes. You put on all of the nice things. But inside of you, there are parts of you that are breaking. And that's all right. You're human. Mm -hmm. Know when to get help. Know when to get counseling. But know this. You are designed by God for greatness. And taking care of yourself first is the very first step in identifying how you're going to lead that life for greatness. Oh, Got to do it. <laughs> mic drop, complete mic drop. Oh, Got to do it. 
ma'am, you know, I want to keep you here all day, but I know <laughs> we, we got stuff that we have to do. So I want to first just thank you for everything that you have shared, because I know that even as I listen to, there are, are parts of my life where I still need to move things around and shake some stuff up. It's a journey. I'm not perfect, it is a journey. right? It's and a so journey. even as we talked about a week ago, our conversation offline activated me in different ways. Uh, as yours did me too. Listen, <laughs> and that's why it's so important to, to be surrounded by people that will help you empower yourself. Notice you don't depend on them too. It's an internal thing. Correct, correct. But to have correct. other folks. And so I want to thank you for that. Absolutely. Um, and then I want to ask you the famous three questions that I ask everybody. On All the right, podcast. let's hear, so let's hear. Let, let's go with this. Um, <laughs> If you could go back in time and have a conversation with the 17 year old version of yourself and give her one piece of advice and one piece of advice only, what would it be and why? To be unapologetically you. Ooh. Mm. And why not to be influenced by the opinions of people and what society has to say, because they don't define or design your life. Mm. And so being authentically and unap unapologetically you needs to be done in your own design. God created you that way. I absolutely love that and agree wholeheartedly. <sighs> okay, number two. Since we are on the Flow and Flourish podcast, tell me something that you do on a regular basis to make sure that you're able to flow and flourish in every area of your life. On a regular basis, I start very early in the mornings, 5 a.m. I have my devotion time. I have my exercise time, which is my me time. And I also regularly, I am intimately attached to nature mm. i'm always outdoors whether it is listening to the birds going by the beach mm -hmm. taking a stroll i find that i thrive and getting sun sunlight against my skin mm -hmm. i find that it really keeps me grounded and wholesome and helps with my peace I knew we were soul sisters. I belong in Jamaica, girl. I'm just say that now. That's, that's me all day. You'll, you'll see when I get there. Yes, I love that. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. And last but not least, I know we've talked about so much and you've given so many great takeaways for people. But if there's one thing that you want the listeners to walk away with today, what is that? I would want everyone to walk away with knowing that life is a gift. Mm. And I would, want, <laughs> I would want everyone to walk away understanding that they owe it to themselves to treat it as a gift and to live out the purpose that they know that God has designed them to live out. And to really do it with great intention. And that in the midst of everything that they go through, the good, the bad, and the indifferent, the fact that you have life means that you've got something to celebrate and that there's a purpose for you and to live it out fully. Mm. Come on, ma'am. This could have been a whole sermon. <laughs> Oh, uh, now with that, tell everybody where they can find you, what you have going on. Cause I'm sure people going to be beating down my door. Like how do I find that <laughs> Marsha Ann? She just brings me so much joy tell us where they can find you. And of course I'm including it in the show notes as well, but I want them to sure. hear from you. All right. So I am actually best found on Instagram. I'm most active on Instagram. And that's Marsha Ann B, like the Queen B, the letter B. Oh, Queen B. <laughs> so it's Marsha Ann B. And on my Instagram page, I really do a lot of what I refer to as nuggets of encouragement, nuggets of empowerment, and really showing my wholesome life because I am that wholesome being. Um, also, very important and most importantly, especially for your listeners, is that I have a show. It's called Real Talk with Marsha Ann. You have been a yes. guest on my show. Yes, and you will be a guest in my other seasons too. 
Um, but it's Real Talk with Marsha Ann. And I invite everybody to actually subscribe on YouTube to that. And the, the genesis of the show, the reason this show came about was really about me having a space. And the, the initiative of Real Talk is to engage, encourage, empower, and educate women to transform their lives by activating their greatness and living their life on purpose with passion and prosperity. That's it. And so typically I will have other um, guests who are on the show or I'll do the this, this show solo at times, but it's all about ensuring that we truly live our life of purpose with passion and prosperity because that's what we're designed to do. Mm. Um, and so that's on YouTube. And then on my Instagram handle, you're able to download my free pillars about how to activate your life on purpose. And they're all P's. So whether it is your personal development, your professional development, your people pillar, your peace, your prosperity, all of that is there. So that's free for you. And I'm also on Facebook. And on Facebook, I'm Marsha Ann Donaldson Brown. You'll have all of that in your show notes for everybody to be able to get everywhere we need to be with so much greatness. I thank you for the light that you put into the world and just the joy that you bring and your ability to transform hearts and minds with your smile, with your eyes, with your words. And I just, I love everything that you're doing. You know, I can't wait to be a guest again on the Real Talk Show. Yes, you um, have to. Yes. I thank you for the way that you pour into so many of us who need you to keep doing what you're doing to remind us that that greatness is within us, even if we haven't tapped into it in a while. Right. It's there. So yeah. thank you. And God bless you for everything that you do. Uh, well, God bless you. God bless you for all that you're doing. And God bless to each and every listener that has tuned in. And may they share this with someone else. Who also needs to know so that we can get what you're doing out there because every episode is meant to impact lives so bless you oh my goodness thank you marcia ann my pleasure <laughs>